from the cat in the hat. Who are you? Who, me? Why, I'm the cat in the hat. There's no doubt about that. To the Grinch. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the Who's. And the Lorax. Hey, Jackson, get out. And who are you? Wait, wait, I'm, I'm the Lorax. Guardian of the forest. I speak for the trees. Dr. Zeus created some of literature's most memorable characters, all while teaching kids and adults important life lessons. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes, you can steer yourself any direction you choose. In 2012, two decades after the legendary poet died, a manuscript for one of his long lost stories was unearthed and Australian illustrator Andrew Joyner was hand-picked to bring the new picture book to life. How amazing is that? The book is called Dr Seuss's Horse Museum and it just hit Australian cells at, at shelves and Andrew Joyner joins us now from Adelaide to talk about his work. Good morning, congratulations. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Thank you, yes. Now, what, Andrew, tell us when did Dr Seuss actually write this story and, and who found it? Uh, they think he wrote it sometime in the 1950s, uh, uh, probably just before he started working on things like uh, The Cat in the Hat and Green Eggs and Ham, but he never actually finished it. So um, it wasn't until, I don't know, nearly 60 years later that his widow Audrey was cleaning out his studio and she found a box in a cupboard and inside the box were these notes and sketches for the Horse Museum. How fantastic, Andrew. I mean, the concept of the book itself is quite interesting. Can you just explain for our audience what it's about? Yeah, it's quite unusual for a Dr Zeus book in that it's a non-fiction book and it's a book about art. So uh, we follow uh, La Horse as a, a kind of a museum guide that guides us through a museum showing uh, reproductions of actual horse art by different painters from throughout art history. I. I really loved the idea he had for the book when I first saw the sketches, that you could explain art by looking at the way different artists throughout history have painted horses. Mm. Yeah, right. It's really fascinating. So how did you get the call up to work on this and how long did it take you to finish it? And it must be a lot of pressure for you. Uh, yeah, there were, I guess there was a little bit of pressure. Uh, the first I heard of it was when uh, a woman called Kathy Goldsmith here from Random House in America, um, who actually worked with Dr. Zeus for the last 15 years of his life as his art director. Uh, she got in touch with me probably late 2017, and the first thing she did was she just wanted me to sign a non-disclosure agreement before she could show me what she had to show me. And um, when it did come through about a day later, I couldn't believe it. Like, mm -hmm. that I was looking at these unfinished sketches by Dr. Zeus and that they wanted me to illustrate it. Um, from there, it probably, I think it took about six months of kind of hard work to do it. Um, but which, like, when I tell that to kids, they think it's an incredibly long time, but yeah. that's actually yeah. pretty good. <laughs> that's a pretty good period of time it to is. work on a book. As you mentioned, um, Dr. Seuss actually left behind some sketches that you were able to work from. Did that make the process easier or more difficult, Andrew? Uh, I. Well, there were sketches there. They were a lot of them were pr really rough. Uh, there was probably only one that I followed quite closely, um, and even then, that was quite rough. So I liked that they were rough drawings um, because it gave me a bit of freedom to do my own thing. Mm. And even right from the start, Random House uh, and Kathy said to me they didn't want me to imitate Doctor Zeus. They sort of just wanted me to do my own thing. That's why they asked me to do it. Mm. Um, I think it'd be really hard to imitate too. He's like, yeah. there's only really one Dr. Zeus. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. He's, it's I a mean, signature he's been style. A, yeah, yeah. I know, I'm sure it's influenced the way I draw, um, just because I loved Dr. Zeus as a kid. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, and I just tried to sort of bring that influence out, I guess, in yeah. my drawings. But you've never studied art, Andrew, so you taught yourself yeah. how to draw and now you're doing this. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah, I didn't study art beyond year 10 in uh, high school. Um, but I always drew, and I was one of those kids at school, they, they always seemed, every school I visit as an illustrator, there's always a kid who's known to be good at drawing. Mm -hmm. And I was just that kid. Um, I used to love copying when I was a kid. And yeah. There's a bit of a stigma, I think, against copying, but it's, I think it's a great way to learn how to draw and how drawings work and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, but yeah, and I just kept on drawing all through my life until eventually it became my job. 
And you've got two children of your own. Were they excited to hear that you were bringing a Dr. Zeus book to life? Yeah, yeah, they loved it. Yeah, they were very excited. They're teenagers now, um, but, uh, but I think it really r reminded them of how big an impact part of their childhood Dr. Zeus was, and I guess everyone's childhood. Mm. And I've got to say, as a parent, it's very nice to see your kids proud of you. Because, um, yeah. you know, I'm sure I can be embarrassing sometimes, especially now they're teenagers, but <laughs> it, was, it was great that they could all come with me and my wife back to uh, New York for the book's launch. That was really a special moment for all of us, I think. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Congratulations, Andrew. Good on you, mate. You're doing Adelaide proud. And, uh, <laughs> Thank we can't you. wait to get the book.